Hello everyone and welcome to yet again another Friday new product post where we talk about all the new products that we have for this week before your lovely weekend. So let's start talking about products. So here we are in my office where we're going to talk about our first two products. Um, these are heating pads. We've got them in two different sizes. We've got a um, 5 by 15 centimeter and then a 10 by 5 centimeter. And these are spec to work at around you know 3 to 5 volts. Uh, the manufacturer does state, do not specifically go above that, but, well, that's why we're here. We're going to show you what happens. Um, but first, we should probably just talk a little bit about these. Um, they're these nice, crinkly little things. They're very thin, very flexible, as you can see. They have this um, polyester mesh on the inside, and they have this little wire that runs through it, and quite simply, you apply power, it resists the power, heats up, and creates warmth. Um, I think we'll, we'll test later with our little um, thermometer gun here, but they get up to about, let's say, 130, 140 degrees at 5 volts, but it is possible to power them beyond that. Um, however, you do run some risks of um, actually damaging the pad itself. We'll talk about that later. Um, this is one that we actually damaged by heating it up too much. They can get up to about you know, 310 degrees, and that's where the polyester starts to melt. So let's hook one of these up like I have, look at the um, thermometer here and see what happens at five volts. So right now we're measuring about yeah, 74, 75 degrees and let's turn it on. We've got it set to five volts and um, the current limiting is off so it should draw as much current as it needs. So we turn it on and you can see instantly 78, 79, 80, 81, maybe two, blah, blah, blah. Um, right now we're drawing about 0.6 amps, and this is the 5 by 15 centimeter. And um, we'll just let it keep going here. So we're about 93, 94, 95. Went down a little bit. And if we let this sit for you know, a few minutes, um, this should get to about 120 degrees. Um, yeah, we're only measuring about 100 right now. Um, so that's what happens with this. Let's just plug in the smaller one just as kind of a comparison. And since it's already been on for a second. Now on the smaller one, we're actually drawing 0.8 amps. So we're actually drawing a little bit more current, um, presumably because it's a smaller surface area. So it's going to draw more current for the surface. Um, and we're about 105, something like that. So that's how these work. They heat up generally pretty quick, but it takes them a while to get all the way up to their temperature. But keep in mind, this is only at 5 volts and 0.8 amps, or 0.6 on the bigger one. So they don't draw a ton of current. You're probably wondering what happens if we increase the voltage. Well. Let's have a look at this. We're at a 112, 113, something like that. Let's go up to 6 volts. You can see 119, somewhere around there, 120. So it definitely goes up. Now if we increase this up to 9, now we're at 9, we're drawing 1.2 amps, and you can see we're about 140 and still rising pretty quickly. So yeah, we're well over 150, and you can definitely feel some warmth coming off of this. Now, something to note is I've actually run both of these, this and the um, larger one, for about six hours at 12 volts, and I had no issues whatsoever. They did get very warm. Um, the other thing I will mention, too, is so this is right around uh, 160. Now, if I put my hand on this, and then measure it, we've actually cooled it off considerably. These things do not recover very quickly from being cooled off. So if you have these in gloves or mittens or you know a tank of water, you're gonna have to adjust for that. Right now it's just in open air and you know we're measuring 170 or whatever. But as I put my hand on it, you can see it cools it off pretty quickly. So that is something to take into account. Um, all these measurements are just the nominal open air rating, you know, just without anything on it to cool it off. So 
Let's go up to 12 volts and see what happens it there. Things get kind of interesting. So we're 12 volts, we're about almost one and a half amps, and you can see we're well over 200 degrees. We're approaching 220, and you can really feel some heat coming off this, actually 230. Um, this should peak out around 240, I think, is what we tested it out. Well, it's still going. And as you can see, it's actually starting to crinkle a little bit. It's not flat like this one was. So this is kind of the highest point that I would run these at, um, you know, for any length of time. But as you can see, 245, 246, they do get pretty warm. So if you had this um, that you're using to incubate or do something like that, this is about as much as I would run into them. And it is very warm, almost hot, you know, too hot to the touch. But as I said, by putting your hands on it or, you know, putting something else on it, we'll insulate it and cool it down. So it runs at 12 volts just fine without anything insulating it. If you were to insulate it, it would run a little bit cooler, so you might be okay with that. So your mileage may vary, but this is just a test to give you an idea. Now, I'm going to turn this up to 16 volts and show you what happens when this actually breaks down and goes, it gets too hot for its own good. So we've zoomed in a little bit just to show you what's going on. We're like 240 degrees right now at 12 volts at about 1.35 amps. So let's turn the power supply up as high as it can go, just 17.5. You can instantly see and hear a little bit the polyester start to break down. And we're at 320 and still increasing. We're almost at 330. We're past 330 right now. And you can see these wires are just severing through all the polyester there. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend running them like this um, just because the polyester is what's keeping all the wires separated. Um, so it's, it's obviously being broken down. Now, like I said before, if you had something on this that was insulating it, that insulator would maybe make it not get so hot and therefore wouldn't cut through the polyester. So your mileage may vary. Keep in mind these are only rated up to 5 volts. However, we're demonstrating that they can reliably go up to about 12 volts and they start to break down at, we're at 17 and a half right now. And we're drawing consistently 1.6 amps. And if we measure it, we're about 350 degrees and it is very warm over the top. Now, as I said, this is not typical use case scenario, but we just wanted to give you a little bit better idea of what the ratings meant. That these are in fact rated for only five volts, but as we've demonstrated here, you can run them higher with, you know, a lot of different caveats. Um, at the 17 and a half volts at 1.6 amps, that is definitely where we start to see some breakdown. Um, at 12 volts, like I said, I have both of these running for four to six hours on my desk without any issues, and those were not being insulated by anything. So um, take that for whatever it's worth to you, um, but know that it's rated at five volts, probably perfectly fine at nine, and probably perfectly fine at 12. Um, and you're gonna run into some issues beyond 16. So hopefully that gives you a better idea, and there you go, the heating pads. So here we are in Nick's office, and I'm gonna have him do some explaining on the Codex Shield. Hey, I'm Nick, and I'm gonna tell you about the Audio Codex Shield from Open Music Labs. Uh, this is essentially a breakout board for the Wolfson WM8731, which is an audio codec chip. So uh, what it does is it does a digital to analog conversion on one side, and it does an analog to digital conversion on the other. Both of those are stereo, and it's 24 bits, so you can actually get some really good quality audio data through this chip, and it allows you to actually pull that data and then screw with it a little bit and then put it back out onto the audio stream. So what you end up with is a shield that can basically act sort of like a effects pedal for a guitar or as a standalone musical instrument. It uh, has these uh, audio jacks on either side, your standard eighth inch audio jacks, one for in, one for out, and then uh, two potentiometers on the shield that allow you to modulate the parameters in your code. So what this does is it, it lets your Arduino or your uh, Leaf Labs maple board uh, sort of become a musical instrument. So um, let's plug it in and see what it does. 
Here is the audio codec shield, and I've actually added these knobs to the potentiometers. These don't come with the shield, but the potentiometers do. Um, this is just to make it a little easier to demonstrate what's going on here. So um, what I've done is I've hooked this up uh, such that the input is coming from a keyboard. And the keyboard is actually an audio keyboard that I wrote for Arduino. So this is a separate Arduino over here that's running a piece of code that lets me play uh, chiptune type sort of 8-bit music with my computer keyboard. And I'm going to let you hear what that sounds like without the shield. Um, that just sounds like... So that's a really basic square wave sound. Um, it's a little hot, a little distorted, just because of the way that I have it set up uh, with my computer speakers. Um, but it gives you a nice idea of what we're doing with the shield. So that's going into the shield. Out of the shield is my computer speakers. So um, here in a minute, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, adjust these knobs while I play the keyboard and uh, modulate the sound that's coming through the shield. So what I've done is I've opened up uh, Arduino and I've loaded some example code that comes with this shield. And the example code is for a flanger. And uh, what they've done is they've set it up such that each of these potentiometers controls an aspect of the flange. One is the frequency and one is the depth. And uh, they've actually written an entire library that makes it really easy to use the audio codec shield with Arduino. And the same with the Leaf Labs Maple Board. There's a library for that as well. So when you stack the shield on and you load this code, this basically becomes a flanger. And uh, what it's doing in the program flow is it's grabbing chunks of audio um, every you know, couple hundred times a second maybe, um, uh, screwing with that audio a little bit and then sending it back out. So there's uh, the slightest delay, um, but it's, it's not something that's even perceivable uh, with an Arduino. And uh, supposedly you get about four times the performance out of a Leaf Labs Maple. So um, we're going to go ahead and play those same sounds. And I'm going to tweak these knobs at the same time. And you should be able to hear uh, what's going on and what's happening to that square wave. And uh, we're going to try and make some really nasty noise and some really funky music. So uh, here it goes. So that's what happens to those square waves when they go through the shield. As you can hear, that's a lot more of a rich sound than you normally get out of Arduino-based audio processing, and that's because the Wolfson audio codec chip is really doing a lot of the work there and allowing the Arduino to grab the bytes of sound information and um, play with them. So. Um, that's what the audio codec shield does. It also allows you to play it as an instrument in and of itself. And there are a few other demo programs. And I can actually load those up and um, show you what they do uh, really quickly here. Um, if I just load the variable delay onto the Arduino, which I'm doing right now, um, it's compiling the sketch, uploading. And now this has become a variable delay module. So I'll play again. And you can hear it added just a little bit of delay um, to the sound, sort of a stereoization effect. So you can hear how quickly we're able to change sounds with this shield just by uploading new code. Um, completely changes the way that you get sound out of it. So it's a really good shield for doing uh, musical applications or just doing um, some really odd notification sounds for a system or actually uh, using it as like a guitar effects pedal and modulating instruments that you already have. Um, any of those audio applications, it's fantastic. It allows your Arduino or your Maple board to uh, really get in there and do some higher end audio processing that those boards just originally weren't capable of doing. So there you have it, another Friday new product post. If you want to heat things up, check out the heating pads and check out the audio codec shield as well. Um, and as always, as I say every week, go ahead and check out the rest of the new products on the product post on the website, and we'll see you again next week with even more new products.